I'm Jennifer Latsky and I'm an associate editor with High Plains Journal and uh, today we are talking with Dan Forgy who's one of our keynote speakers at Soil Health U here in Salina. Dan, let's talk about the top three things that you really wanted farmers to understand from your presentation today. You know, the, the probably one of the biggest ones is residue and how you protect the residue and residue is the driving force and then another is the value of carbon. Uh, I don't think we take enough into to give carbon enough credit and how important it is and, and with carbon uh, you can increase your organic matter. And I think that's the whole driving force and we beat this we beat this land down enough and with our ancestors and when people really don't did have the tools and the knowledge to do this and to improve it. And now we've got the tools and the knowledge, so I just think it's time to move on. And that's what I kind of wanted to uh, kind of let everybody know. Everybody's got a, some way they can improve their soils. And I just hope I got my point across. Okay. Now, you mentioned residue. Uh, what's your rule of thumb for keeping and managing residue on your on your land up there in South Dakota? What's What are some of the key metrics that you look for? You know, I, I, the residue, of, uh, we'll plant crops just for the uh, more residue benefit. And a lot of it is that's one what reason why oats got, came into our rotation. But uh, the rule of thumb is on our cropping system, out of our uh, 14 crops you grow, we want 70% of them to be high residue crops. So will break down soil and, and the soil armor. So we're taking out a lot of the equation. We're not quite as heavy in, in the soybeans like a lot of people. We'll raise uh, field peas and lentils, but I mean, so that's kind of rule of thumb. We want 70% of our cropping rotation to be high residue. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about cattle grazing. Yeah, you have a, a whole herd of, of mama cows, cow-calf herd up there. Um, how, do, how does cattle grazing work in your whole system's approach to managing the soil health? The, it took us a while. I mean, we're, we're slow learners. I mean, usually we have to make mistakes to learn, but one thing that really helped is when we decided to manage their grazing. So what uh, we'll, if we have a, 160 acres of full season cover, they're put in paddocks and then they're, they're moved uh, to, so they don't overgraze. And I think you have to you have to be uh, start doing that. You can't just turn in like the old days and just let them graze everything in the ground. You have to leave that residue on the ground. Another big benefit we're finding, if you stop and think about this, is that 80 percent of your of what cows eat, they only they only take 20 percent. The rest goes back onto the soil as manure or urine. And, and uh, so I mean, it's just uh, they're just a factory. They're just they're just kind of cycling things a little faster. Okay, um, with the cattle and your cover crops, um, you do a little bit of, of a different fertility program. Um, you you manage your fertility a little bit differently. Uh, let's talk about that for a second. You know that I'm, I'm one of the I'm one of these guys that I, I like everybody. I want to raise high yields. Do I really care if someone? I go in and I say, well, I raised 180 bushel corn, I'd rather be consistent. And uh, I, do, I do not want to over fertilize, I do not want to under fertilize, I do not want to use the, the uh, my organic matter because that's our savings account. So what I'll do is I'll, if I get that good year and we have a chance for a good yield, I'll, I'll rely on our organic matter to carry this through. But I found out the farther we get into this, the, the more if you have a, a just a, your average yield, and instead of going for that high it's stuff and it's good for you, it's good for the soil. So I just, I can't emphasize enough on how that, I look back and, and what you read about the mycorrhizae and what you read about all the, the bacteria and the fungi and uh, uh, how we sometimes hurt ourselves by over fertilizing. Um, I think you, you, you said it best, you, you fertilize for maximum um, profit, not maximum yield. And a lot of folks um, have that backwards, <laughs> you feel. Well, it's kind of the end thing because everywhere you go, they'll say, well, the only way in this depressed time, the only thing you can do is you have to raise more bushels to just give you more dollars. And I think everybody's capable of doing it. They just sit back and say, now, wait a minute here and, and uh, just figure out where their most maximum profit is. I think that's I think that's the key. And I think work with covers, work with cattle, you know, and if you don't have cattle, your neighbor might have cattle. So if you can, if you can, uh, take a crop off like a, a winter wheat crop and you can come back in with a, a cover after that and you can get your your your, uh, 
you know, everybody, it might be wrong in this, but everybody kind of says on covers, they say, well, how much will you charge me? And, and a lot of guys, guys with the cattle should be paying you instead of, you know, or, or, or you paying them because there's such a benefit to having cattle on, on the fields, on the soil. Um, so essentially, instead of buying fertilizer from a co-op, um, you're buying fertilizer from that better soil that you're improving. You know, and I'm seeing that all the time, you guys, and I really encourage people to read about mycorrhiza because uh, the once you get into it, I mean, it's just, uh, there's a lot of good things about that. And, there's, and I'm not ever gonna say we're gonna be organic. I have no, no way. Am I ever gonna say we're gonna quit using fertilizer? No way. Am I, I gonna say we're gonna cut back on our fertilizer? I have cut back. I'm gonna find out what works best on our farm. And that's what I think everybody has to do is see what works best on your farm. And, and I think there'll be a win for everybody. Great. Um, so we've talked about uh, carbon, we've talked about fertilization and uh, organic matter. How do you how do you manage your organic matter? We talked a little bit about um, mycorrhizal. <laughs> um, let's talk a little bit about that organic matter and how important it is for what your system is. You know, the organic matter, a lot of guys that look at it, well, I've got this much nitrogen, I've got this much phosphorus, and what I want is the soil health and the water holding capacity. And uh, it's the number one key for us. And uh, I soil sample probably more than what I should, but I want to keep a track. I want to find out what's happening in our soils. And so by doing that, we uh, uh, I try to maintain around the four, four percent. There for a while when we took off, I could actually like on that chart, I could say we're actually decreasing organic matter. And then I, I took another mindset, but, but back then we were low on carbon, raising carbon, so, and uh, I take a different mindset. I just think now that we just, where we're at, we're getting into that farming for maximum profit, not maximum yield. I think that's helped a lot. Okay. Anything that you wanted, wanted to cover, wished you could have had time to cover today? Any final thoughts? You know, the only thing, and I said a little bit when I talk, and, and I just hope that everybody gets the message that you've got to start someplace. I mean, it might be one of these where you might plan another, put another crop in your rotation. And, and if you do stuff, if you do things, start on a small scale. But I really think everybody has to do something to, to change what you're doing. It's just like when we were doing it, that wasn't just easy. It's pretty easy to look at the thing and say, well, yeah, they did this and there it went. But when you actually get put in that spot, when you've got to change something, and for another thing is just don't change, try to change everything at once. I mean, it's taken me 24 years to get to where I am right now. So just, just baby steps and, and you'll be fine. But just keep going in the right direction. All righty. Well, thanks so much yep. for coming and speaking for us. Uh, for High Plains Journal, I'm Jennifer Latsky, and we'll see you at next year's So Healthy.